Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Road Less Taken. This is the weekly web series from Nexus Consulting where we are in conversation with people who've made unconventional career choices and excelled at them. In this episode of TRLT is very very special. It's very special because uh, we have a, a remarkable person as our guest on this episode. She comes from Kanpur she's done courses in zoology in education and in done an mba but today she is a real high flyer she is a wing commander with the indian air force over the last 14 years of service she's done several interesting roles and positions and is today at the air force headquarters in charge of publicity please welcome as our guest for this episode of trlt Wing Commander Sneha Singh. It's my pleasure to be uh, connected with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you are a unique and inspiring example. So we're going to use this time to talk about uh, what your journey has been so far, what were your motivations, and how you have enjoyed this wonderful journey of nearly one and a half decades with uh, the uh, Indian Air Force. Let me begin by taking you back to your childhood memories. Uh, tell us where did you grow up? Uh, you know what were some of your typical ambitions as a girl growing up yeah to tell you about a little bit about my background i belong to a very humble uh, background my father was a jco in indian navy so uh, talking about if you want to know about my link to the defense services yes i was brought up uh, in a defense background itself uh, my father being in navy traveled all across the country so especially he was um, posted to the coastal areas Okay. Because you find mainly navy in the coastal areas only. Their bases are mainly in those areas. Right. Right. So uh, throughout my childhood, I've studied in KVs, and okay. thereafter, to tell you, uh, I have spent around six years in Port Blair. Okay, lovely. <laughs> so that was the last place where my father was posted. Okay. So, so I'm a daughter of a JCO from Indian Navy. Um, I saw my father wearing uniform every day and going to office. Okay. Right? but i really didn't know how to uh, become an um, officer in in you know uh, in any of the defense services okay. because for me my father was just earning for you know bringing us up that is how i looked at it when i was a daughter hmm. but when i grew up that time i really wanted to be in this uniform because i saw some of the naval officers visiting our schools ah, so okay. we had a chance to interact with them that okay. was the time it was somewhere when i was in 10th 10th class i i guess so then when i got a chance to interact with the officers in white uniform then it just struck me before that i wanted actually speaking i wanted to be an actor ah, like any wow. <laughs> okay. uh, i'm sure you also might have experienced you know uh, every child you know with as they grow up they have different ambitions and it keeps changing Correct. Correct. for me it was like that when i was very young i i was really fascinated by movies and you know i i really loved um, actors so i wanted did you to act in school plays and things like that yes i did yes i did i used to participate in all the co curricular activities be it sports or co curricular activities cultural programs i used to be you know party to everything so uh, i really enjoyed it so that's how that was when i was very young thereafter after some time i wanted to pick up painting as my profession i am uh, i love colors okay and then, like i said that around in 10th class or so when i interacted with officers in uniform hmm. that time uh, my uh, overlook or look out towards defense services totally changed and i wanted to take up as a profession myself okay so that is how my journey was and then i suppose the the background of Uh, the the family that you came from given that uh, your dad was at uh, some part of the uh, defense forces this decision would have been very well supported by the family i'm assuming like uh, to tell you uh, actually my father wanted me to be a teacher my mother wanted me to be a doctor and i didn't know <laughs> either of them <laughs> okay. okay but yes when i told them that i want to uh, join defense services they were okay with it Mm -hmm. and i'm the only one in my entire family and my relatives uh, as a girl child i'm the only one who is in uniform right now fantastic to hear yeah but i had never any issues when i told my parents about it right right 
so you know you obviously uh, inspired by that interaction that you had with the officers uh, you took the plunge and you joined the uh, uh, you know joined the service uh, i will ask you about the starting points of that journey but i want to actually take you back again that one step you said that that interaction with the officers of the navy is what kind of inspired you to to be in uniform what was it about that interaction i mean can you is there anything specific that you can share uh, definitely uniform has its own charm so that was the mm. first thing which struck me officers mm. they have ranks on their shoulder so now if you see a uh, naval uniform their ranks are totally different shiny you know on black color background so i think that was the first thing as a child which struck me and i, I really wanted to have it on my right. shoulder as well right. Right. and then yes the interaction when uh, i interacted with them the level of confidence which they had mm. the kind of uh, you know uh, talk which they gave mm. whenever mm. Like, they they came for uh, functions at our school they they always came as chief guest so mm. all the things put together you know uh, and the kind of uh, respect everybody had for them so um, that that is that is what actually inspired me yeah great great so uh, then you joined uh, tell us you know about your very first day when you joined what are your memories of that uh, where did it happen where did you join how was that first day that first week that first month when you plunged into the world of uh, the edf force we first of all uh, whenever we come to the air force academy all the cadets who are supposed to join reach at the station or at the airport depending on whatever mode of convenience we take okay so um i went to air force academy our um, air force academy is at hyderabad dundigal so okay. i reached sundarbad station and to tell you uh, very frankly it was like a dream i was really not able to believe that yes now i have landed up at hyderabad and i'm going to enter air force academy maybe in couple of hours or so right yes. right that was the first time i was going out of my home alone before that you know uh, right. i'm the eldest in my family among three siblings so uh, generally my father used to be there with me and you know uh, around 15 years back also parents used to be more protective for girl child yes. if you compare for you know with boys so uh, similarly my parents were also very protective but then this was the time i said no i'll go alone because you know you want your daughter to be a soldier so you have to let her be mm -hmm. so uh, the moment i landed up secunderabad station it was just like a dream for me and there after you know all the cadets they came and we were we boarded the bus which had come from air force academy that bus you know had a long thing air force academy in a huge bold uh, letters so again you know everything was very thrilling and then um, we entered the air force academy gate uh, now secunderabad station is around you know uh, it takes around one hour journey the entire journey was it was a flashback for me the first day when i interacted with naval officer to this you know uh, to my journey which i'm going to live now wearing a blue uniform mm. so all those things were playing in my mind and my parents like any other parents they, they struggled a lot bringing up three child you know mm. in, their, in their life so all those things uh, the effort of my parents which they had put in and because of them i'm here all those things were playing in my mind mm. the moment i reached at the gate of air force academy and that gate opens i felt like like this is the time i have i'm going to live my dream right so so uh, it was really you know i had goosebumps in fact to tell you very frankly i was numb for some time the moment we entered academy that those roads it is beautiful right okay so um, now i felt yes now i am part of it okay <laughs> now if i have to tell you about first month of training uh, unlike any other trainings for other professions when you compare defense training it has to be definitely different mm. because mm. Here we are not trained only to get skill which is required for the profession but more than that physical and mental strength is taught to us at that one year of training at air force academy right so it was a learning experience throughout from day 1 to the last day mm. okay uh, how to eat how to sit how to talk to people uh, around because you know when we are in uniform we are carrying that Uh, you know indian air force we are representing indian air force wherever we are okay right. whether it is formal location or i am on civil street mm. i am an indian air force officer now so mm. all those things are taught to us at air force academy so everything was so wonderful mm. and um, 
you know i was i actually came to know about my limits as a person which yeah. i thought was somewhere here that bar was raised right. and um, i i was shown my limits physically mentally and professionally yes whatever i was supposed to learn i was given everything so it was how many, how many cadets joined uh, along with you uh, in a batch uh, we were around 300 300 okay yeah because in air force academy we have two batch batches uh, going simultaneously for junior term as well as senior term so okay. in junior term we were around 300 cadets also okay okay yeah. fantastic and uh, since then you've been in a variety of postings i think uh, over the last what 13 and a half 14 years now uh, yeah. you, you you tell us about some of those uh, interesting stints that you've had and what you've done uh, in those because for a lot of uh, lay people i think the air force means everybody assumes that uh, you are getting into a plane and you know flying somewhere uh, yeah. it's not the case there are so many other roles to do and things to do in the air force as well right so tell us about some of the things you've done you are absolutely right you know people think air force is only about flying it is mainly about flying okay our existence is because of flying because we take care of the dimension so definitely everything is related to flying whatever even i am an adam officer administrative officer in the air force uh, but whatever even i do is towards contributing towards flying right um, like when i whatever you said it is exactly uh, i come to know when i interact with students uh, in my 14 years of career i have been given different assignment and everything is equally interesting and thrilling for me despite being from administrative branch indian air force was kind enough to you know uh, give me different portfolios so i was instructor in my own air force academy where i was uh, trained for one year so it was a nostalgic uh, feeling for me when i went back to air force academy and to tell you it was a great experience because i replaced my own instructor in our wow. department wow. That's so, always a very special thing, right? To go back and replace your own teacher. Yes, yes. So the first thing what I did, I called up my instructor and told her that, ma'am, uh, just give me some tips. I'm going to do the same job as you. What you did, and I was posted at a uh, instructor uh, at Air Force Academy, and I was taking care of all the outdoor trainings. So okay. totally different experience because you know there. Uh, the the way i told you that you know i was shown my limits now i have to show limits of the cadets who are coming as a uh, trainees during my tenure there mm. so different experience then i went to uh, mysore there i was uh, related to i i was doing job which was related to the induction wherein the cadet uh, the st uh, students are tested and uh, checked for you know olqs whether they are fit to be in different services or not so ssb is being conducted at air force selection boards okay. Yeah. i was party to that team also then right now the designation which i have at um, air headquarters it is looking after publicity of indian air force again totally different field and you know i interact with so many school students college students i roam around the entire country uh, and tell them about indian air force you know because um, i personally feel that you know despite being so much of information available at internet mm. there are things Uh, which are holding students to come towards defense forces they they look mm. up at defense forces in a totally different way but mm. when the, you know um, i totally uh, link it to the my school days mm. where i was I, i got a chance to interact with a naval officer that broke that you know barrier that yes right. i looked up having you know achieving that dream so similarly mm. when i go interact with students uh, and when i try to resolve their queries and then at end of that when they say that ma'am yes i want to be an defense uh, soldier and see right. you at air academy so these are the kind of experience i get and it is only because of air force that i'm getting all these uh, experiences you know different portfolios all across right. the country side moving around i was also part of um, induction of one of the uh, aircraft which is indigenously developed aircraft lca you might have right. have yes so i was posted to sulu it's a okay. sulu, yeah it's a fighter base uh, near coimbatore right so seeing an aircraft being inducted into defense services for the first time when it lands on runway it's a different mm. experience 
yeah these are few exciting things what you know i could do during my 14 years of career okay. is there any one uh, specific incident that uh, or 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 memory or moment that you want to or you are allowed to talk about in more detail when i talk about as an officer spending 14 years in this uniform the thing which uh, uh, you know motivates me to keep doing well are my uh, soldiers mm. my airmen if mm. i am able to take care of them and one find there are certain instances where you know my m and they walked up to me and they said ma'am thank you very much for the advice you have given us oh, i think no. all other things because as an officer we are supposed to take care of our men right so if i'm able to do that i'm if i'm able to keep my team together because defense services is all about uh, you know team game if right. an individual i might be exceptional but if i'm not able to keep my team along with me and you know uh, uh, keep my morale of my team uh, up i think i fail as an uh, officer mm. so uh, there are some instances like that when elderly people they walked up to me and they said thank you very much you know uh, your advice has helped me in a, wow. uh, in a personal capacity mm. then definitely yes in a professional capacity i am here so we work as a team so every day is an experience actually fantastic great to hear great to hear i want to go back to one point you made about uh, you going all over the country uh, in your role and interacting so that must be like a particularly special experience right because um, you travel the length and breadth of the country and uh, you know of course uh, you have your air force family and fraternity everywhere and uh, you interact with uh, with people everywhere do you think uh, across the country perceptions about the defense forces the air force and so on is different in different parts of the country have you got a really rich cultural mix from whatever you've seen yes yes it's a very rich uh, experience that i got you know uh, i have gone to almost all the states okay driving all the states yes so um i think air force maybe at, um, around 10 years back especially in southern part people were not much aware about indian air force but now with all the technological advancements the kind of So, um, uh, machinery, the equipments which we are inducting, with that, the, the media is talking about Indian Air Force. So now I think everybody is aware of Indian Air Force. So yes, there is a change from past in my like you know uh, when I was posted to my so. Uh, I'll tell you one instance where I was traveling in train and somebody asked me. There was one uh, couple. They asked me, so where do you work? I was mm. quite young at that time. Yeah. They say they, so. They asked me, are you a uh, are you a student? I said no, I'm in uh, Indian Air Force. is like indian air force i said yes it's one of the fighting forces of our country <laughs> so, and they were to tell you uh, they were professors in okay. university but still they were not aware of it but now mm. even children the, the students even mm. they are aware of uh, indian air force mm. so uh, yes time has changed and uh, i think every part of country people are aware of all the three defense services was one of the days when people used to correlate defense only to army army Not, right. yeah so uh, when you say a soldier generally people uh, in southern part used to perceive okay army jawan or army officer but right. now they know that there are three different um, uh, services uh, you know who are taking care of uh, defense of this country and with uh, this greater awareness and interaction between the defense forces and let's say the the civilian world if you want to put it that way the the, yeah. the corporates and the colleges and the schools do you think there is a you know you touched upon the things that uh, a stint in the air force kind of teaches you uh, you know you get to discover more about yourself you get to discover your limitations your bars your your heights and so on do you think there is a lot for the say the corporate world or the growing up youngsters in a college to learn from the defense forces and vice versa the defense also seems to be kind of you know becoming more and more professional as we uh, you know as the years go by so do you think there's a good chance of a lot of interactive learning between the corporate world and the defense world actually i think uh, defense forces have always been very professional in their approach from day day one are very professional in their own way right right uh talking about other mutual learnings definitely i think corporates they have learned more more from us you know, certainly you know, yeah. thinking of team because otherwise corporate when you say it is more about making money but mm. now they have learned taking care of their own people i think those things are imbibed from defense services right because in defense we we are mainly focusing towards the you know team spirit mm. motivation morale i think these are the things 
which were at one point of time linked only to defense services right okay. but now these things if you see you will find even in corporate that they, they'll talk about all these things mm mm-hmm. and uh, one thing which probably at some certain time we were lacking was you know uh, induction of new technologies which right. i think for you know many many years now um, since our independence still if you see today's date we have advanced ourselves to right. another height right. in a position that people can take things from us from, from the from the from completely the yes. completely agree yes, yes. so and your current job involves you uh, interacting a lot with youngsters you said school children uh, college students and so on so what what do you try to kind of tell them and uh, what's their response uh, typically these days response is amazing okay because at end of the session uh, you know the way students they interact with me that interaction shows that yes they they heard whatever i said So you Generally, do it workshops, is it? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes. Uh, what I do right now because of COVID thing, we are we are doing online sessions. Parents, I tell, yeah. So it, everything is virtual nowadays because obviously right. all the schools, colleges, institutes are closed, so we can't go and visit them. So everything is virtual now because of COVID. Prior to COVID, we used to go to the schools and colleges, interact with them personally. Okay. Because yeah, because as as uh, you know. Um, as for my experience what i saw that in personal interaction will have better impact than just reading or going over net mm. or just taking mm. some photographs mm. uh, i because you know uh, me being in this uniform is result of one such interaction right right right, right. <laughs> so right. i experience the same thing and i get same response from the students who were there there mm. are many students who walked up to me after the session saying that ma'am we had different opinion about uh, defense services we had so many inhibitions but mm. now you have cleared all those you know air and all those inhibitions so you now we would definitely at least try for being in defense services mm. cuz they feel that you know defense officers are from other world they are from some different yeah. world so uh-huh. i said you know i was one of you at one point of time right. i am from oh. a very simple background mm. okay i can achieve this you can definitely do that what are the most common questions you get from these uh, kids uh they they common is ma'am can i be an officer in defense services okay. so very common question so which like is a self doubt thing exactly so so they are unconfident of becoming an officer in, in defense okay so that, that that confidence level i had to boost up i have to tell them and uh, second doubt is generally like uh, in one of the questions you you said that you know everybody feels that defense air force especially is only about flying so i have to mm. clear that out no it is mm. not only about flying mm. uh, all across the streams any education background you have you know uh, you'll find place for everybody in indian air force there are different streams so my aim of going and interacting with students i have basically two aims at one is to tell them about one of the you know their own defense services air force we are existence is because of you people mm. so i have to tell them okay they need to feel connected to us mm. because there is no war going on right right now right, right? right. so so that so students yeah one another uh, very simple uh, a common question which they ask is ma'am what do you do when there is no war <laughs> so you <laughs> so right. i have to tell them that yes you know uh, you don't have exams every day <laughs> And just once a year or six monthly, you have exam, but yeah. you keep preparing for it for entire year. So yes. similarly, war war is not that's every day. Great example day. to give the kids actually. That's a great <laughs> example. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell them we are just preparing for that one day, and in fact, for you, you know your schedule. We right. don't know the schedule. <laughs> right? So everything is sudden for us, and we have to meet up to the expectations of this country. Okay. if we are guarding the skies if we are guarding the aerospace so we have to meet up that expectation whenever time comes mm. so we prepare for, so these are the things when when i interact i have to you know uh, right. emphasize that sense of pride in them uh, that uh, sense of belongingness to the country and to the defense services mm. that confidence I, i i try to build up that confidence that they should have on defense services right and to tell you very frankly people re- you know students they really um, Uh, the the way they uh, they uh, interact with me and at the end of it you you know at times they they start shouting bharat mata ki jai and all those kind of slogans nice so uh, so it's really nice to interact and secondly yes uh, other thing is to tell them about various avenues about indian air right. right 
Right. So many of the students they feel that if they don't have maths and physics, they cannot be part of Indian Air Force. So I tell them, no, that's not true. Mm. I, I never had, I never studied maths and physics in my mm. uh, campus too. But I'm I'm sitting in front of them. Mm. These are things, the personal experiences. I I you know I try to clear those doubts which they have in their mind. Right. So, yes. Right. I have uh, last two questions for you, uh, Vinka Mandasneha. One is that, um, do you think you, uh, as a woman uh, in the forces, uh, do you think you had to face a bit more challenging situation than your male counterparts, uh, uh, you know, right from your cadet days till today? The best part of Air Force is that, you know, there is no gender inequality. Everybody is considered as soldier, whether right. you are male or female. When I landed up at Air Force Academy, I was given the same uniform what my mm. male counterparts were wearing. I had undergone the same training what my male counterparts are, uh, you know, they were going through at that time. We are getting same pay what male counterparts are getting. Right. I'm the same. I'm getting the same portfolios which probably a male was doing, you know, before me. Right. So uh, I never felt that there is any special treatment given to me. Mm. Or I had to prove myself separately that you you know yes I'm a officer no everything is just this blue uniform and uh, there was no in you know inequality which I faced during my career so great to hear uh, yeah yes uh, so uh, I think that's the best part of uh, defense service and especially I can vouch for at least Indian Air Force right I never so, yeah right great uh, fantastic. As a last question, this is something we ask all our guests on uh, The Road Less Taken, is what is the one uh, message that you would like to give to uh, people watching the show, uh, especially to young girls out there who might be inspired by you to take on a career uh, in the armed forces, in the Air Force? What is the one message that you would like to leave with all of them? One message, I think, uh, would be to follow your dreams. Okay. okay, your dreams might keep changing till the time you are in 12. But then finally, after you uh, realize that actually what you want to be in your uh, life, mm. you should just follow it up. Your parents might have different opinion. You have to respect their feelings also. Mm. But uh, do what you want to do in your life. And at the same time, be a good citizen of this country. Because I feel that all of us... Some, somewhere or other, we contribute in building up this nation. I'm in this blue uniform. I'm doing my duty towards the nation. Similarly, anybody who is even at civil street, they have some of the responsibility uh, towards this country. So I think you just do, do what you are supposed to do. And, um, you know, you can actually achieve heights. Thank you. That, those are very, very inspiring words, uh, Wing Commander Sneha Singh. Thank you very much for... Uh, spending the last half an hour with us and sharing your wonderful story, wonderful journey. I'm sure it's very, very inspiring for a lot of people out there to see. And uh, we hope that some of them at least will be inspired to follow in your footsteps and make a career in the Defense Forces. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was Wing Commander Sneha Singh telling us about her wonderful journey of how she dreamt about joining the Air Force and made that a reality and how the last 14 years have been very exciting for her doing various stints in various divisions and departments of the Indian Air Force. If that was inspiring and made an impact on you, don't forget to watch future episodes of The Road List Taken. They drop every Friday on our YouTube channel, Nexus Consulting. All past episodes are available there as well, starting from episode number one. So please do watch, like, share, and subscribe. Till we meet you at another episode of The Road List Taken, Stay home, stay safe, and this is Venki Srinivasan saying bye-bye.